Welcome again. This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and this video is a slight departure from videos focused on SimSmith. This video is about components or parts and how they are characterized. Everyone should be aware that there are no such things as perfect resistors, perfect capacitors, perfect inductors, etc. All parts deviate from the ideal, and we need ways to quantify what's going on with the part as to how um, ideal, how close to ideal it, the part may actually be. I would suspect that most people have heard the terms ESR, which stands for Equivalent Series Resistance, which has units of ohms, and other terms such as loss tangent, dissipation factor, and Q, which have no units attached to them, or just not, they're just numbers, but they do vary with frequency. So what exactly is the relationship between these terms? I can look in a college textbook uh, for electrical, uh, on electrical engineering, I can get, search Wikipedia, I can look other places on the web, and the definitions for these things are, are easily found, and we can compare them. Dielectric loss is where, what I get to if I search for loss tangent in Google, I get to this web page, dielectric loss. If we go down to the bottom and ignore all the, the, the math there, we see a picture. And the picture pretty much is, is, is very telling what's going on. If we plot in a complex impedance plane where the horizontal axis is resistance, going off to the right, it's positive. There's nothing to the left because we're not going to allow negative resistance to occur. The, and the vertical axis is the reactance. So it's positive reactance this way, so it's inductive up here. It's capacitive down here. And we take a small leap here and say that all components can be comprised at any individual frequency as a resistance in series with something else. It'd be, it could be an inductor at, at, at at some point for the capacitor, it wouldn't really matter. But uh, there, every, every single component at a given frequency will have the form of R plus or minus JX. So we plot that point right here. And this is R minus JX something. And we see that it does not, this line does not occur on top of this axis. That's, that would be an ideal capacitor. The fact that it's moved out here a little ways means it's not ideal. So we look at the angle between the axis and this line, and, and the same thing would be true for an inductor up here. It wouldn't be on the, on the, on the line going ver the vertical axis. It would be off to the right a little bit. We look at this angle, and we call this angle delta. The tangent of delta is equal to the opposite side, side opposite the angle, divided by the side adjacent to the angle. The side opposite the angle is the ESR, the equivalent series resistance in the part right here. And this magnitude right here is X sub C. And we divide those two, and we, see, we get loss tangent, which is what tangent of delta is. It's ESR over XC. And we always, the, the magnitude of the reactance is always, is always positive. So that's the definition of loss tangent. And what it's trying to tell us is that how far have we deviated away from the vertical axis? Likewise, we can search for dissipation factor. And dissipation factor gives us a slightly different um, description of what, th what they're talking about. But they're talking about dissipation factor being the ratio of the, res the resistive power or the dissipative power in the, in the material or the part divided by the reactive power. We know that in an ideal uh, capacitor or inductor, there is no resistive power. So that dissipation factor would be zero. In real parts, it always is positive and some small value. So we calculate in this circuit right here what the resistive power would be. It would be I, if I, I is the current that flows here, I squared times ESR is the resistive power, I squared times X sub C, which is the reactance of this capacitor, is the reactive power. We have I squared top and bottom. We, we can divide those out, and we get the dissipation factor equals ESR over XC which is exactly what loss tangent was. So now we have loss tangent and dissipation factor being exactly equal to each other. We can go and look at Q and, and get the same thing. And there's a, the Q is a little bit different because they have a lot more description about how Q affects bandwidth and stuff. But the de derivation of Q ultimately ends up being X over R, X over ESR. So we can see that ta loss tangent, dissipation factor are equal, and they're equal to 1 over Q. So all three of those terms are tied together 
very closely. Different manufacturers use different terms for different parts. And as a user, you need to be able to separate those. As an example, let me bring up um, a data sheet here for a, a TDK ceramic capacitor. This part is a, is a size 4520 for those who are not in the United States. Here we would call it an 1808 part. It is a 0.18 inch long, 0.18 inch by 0.08 inches by 0.08 inches high, or 4.5 millimeters by two millimeters wide by two millimeters high. And we look at this part, and these things are dirt cheap. They're less, like 20 cents a piece, uh, I mean, in quantities of tens or so. And they're rated at 3,000 volt DC. They're made with a, a ceramic material that the capacitance does not change with DC bias on it, which is good. They have temperature versus capacitance that is very, very good. It varies less than a tenth of a percent, uh, like plus 0.7 percent to minus plus 0.07 percent to minus 0.03 percent over the full temperature range from minus 25 to plus 85 degrees Celsius. They show the capacitance versus frequency, and this and this plot is kind of a, a bogus plot. This is showing the effects of the resonance that occurs. All capacitors have a, have a resonance that is a series resonance. Uh, the first the first the first abnormality is a series resonance due to some small inductance in the part, and this is just an indication of that. But this is the graph right here that's interesting. Now while we're at it, we can notice the part comes in a 10% part only, and it. Um, well, this part's a 10% part. It may come in 5% part, but this is a 10% part. But it does not come in every single value. So you end up paralleling a few of these. But again, the part is, the part is dirt cheap. So if I look at this curve a little more closely here, make it nice and big, what I see is an ESR that rises pretty linearly. If we look at the rate of rise of the ESR, it turns out to be just about what you would expect from skin effect. Skin effect says if the frequency doubles, say from, let's go from say like 50 megahertz here to like 100 megahertz, what happens is the skin effect drops by the square root of two, so the resistance will go up by the square root of two. And what that means is every time we double frequency, the resistance will rise by the square root of two. And this follows that pretty closely. I measured, tried to measure a couple of these parts as best I could, and I can't measure down this low, but I didn't, I did not see this little perturbation down here. It may exist, it may not exist. We're talking about 0.02 and 0.03 ohms um, at 20 and 30 megahertz, which is pretty tough to measure. But what we can do is from this graph, we can figure out a couple things. We can figure out what the Q of this part is if we wanted to. So at 20 megahertz, we would say the Q is equal to X over R. So X is 80 ohms, and R is like 0 0.02, uh, 0.033 ohms. This is 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.033. So this would have a Q of 2400 at 20 megahertz. Now, if we go to 50 megahertz, which is right there, 20, 30, 40, 50, we see that the Q has dropped to 640. If we go to 100 megahertz, we see the Q is... This is about 16 divided by 0 0.075, uh, which is 210. So we see the Q dropping. Now, all capacitors do this, and I believe, I'm not positive this is the reason why, but I think this is the reason why a lot of capacitor manufacturers don't use Q. Q on a capacitor will always drop with frequency because two things are working against you. One is we know the capacitor reactance is going to drop for, for a particular capacitor value, and the series resistance is rising. Both of those are going in the wrong way. So we see a massive, in, massive decrease in Q, and it starts to sound like a Q of 210 on a capacitor is not very good. But all we have on this capacitor is less than a tenth of an ohm of series resistance. So I think we see things like uh, ESR used more often in capacitors for that very reason. Another thing uh, that goes on here that we have to be a little bit careful about is how much current can we put in this part? This part really didn't say much about what its capabilities were, but what we do know is it's a package 
that's an 1808 or a 4520 based on where you where you live but this package is about a half a watt package if it was a resistor so if i say this is a half a watt um, dissipation capability i can then do i squared r i squared times esr and i can say that at 100 megahertz where esr is 0 0.075 ohms times i squared would equal half a watt and that's 2.58 amps and down here it's even a little bit more so this is a two and a half amp part um, and we can we can you know get that more accurate if you want to but that's a pretty nice little part but we have to kind of glean the stuff out of the data sheet a little bit the uh, next video i was planning on doing was i was going to talk about how we would model parts like this in simsmith and we'll be back to simsmith topic more but in the meantime i thought i'd mention the fact that uh, the different manufacturers data sheets use different terms and as a user or an engineer you need to be uh, competent in being able to uh, extract the necessary data thank you very much if you enjoyed the video please like it uh, and um, if you know people who might like these types of videos please um, point them to the channel and uh, hopefully they'll subscribe thank you very much